Hi, and welcome to Chapter 4 of the Director of Surgical Services Recruitment Toolkit. Previously, we've been focusing on a quick start guide, doing the search yourself, and what to look for in a candidate. But what if you want to use a search firm? Maybe you want passive candidates and the longer tenures and better outcomes passive candidates empirically provide. If that is your goal, then this is the episode for you. We'll talk about concepts to understand about search firms, common terms search firms use with their clients and amongst themselves. I'll give you a few questions to ask if you're interviewing search firms to compare and contrast. How you might negotiate with the search firm to get either a better rate or terms that may be agreeable to your organization. But let's start with the most important thing that you need to know. If you're going to work with a search firm, select one and invest your time, energy, and money into helping them be successful. The slogan, when banks compete, you win, doesn't apply to the search industry. What happens when you accept candidates from multiple competing recruiters is that in a best case scenario, they are both scouring the markets and inevitably bumping into the same candidate, each putting their spin on the opportunity. That's bad. When both present the same candidate, that's worse. And when the firm submits the same candidate second and think they're entitled to a big commission, that's a disaster. Instead, if you're going the search firm route, carefully select the firm. Invest your time, energy, and money into helping them be successful. But how do you select the search firm? Typically, there are two good types of search firms that you will have in your email inbox. One, the search firm who you have worked with before and knows your organization, has filled roles for you before, but maybe never specifically the director of surgical services. I mean, how could they? This role only comes available rarely. The second is the specialist firm that knows surgical services, has relationships with candidates, but doesn't know you or your organization. The benefit here is their domain expertise, but it may be harder for you to negotiate with this firm because you can't package up other positions to gain leverage or fee concessions. Headhunters classify themselves as contingency or retained. Contingency recruiters work like realtors, only getting paid if they make the placement. Retained recruiters are selling their process and expertise and require a portion of their fees up front and throughout the search process. It is difficult but advantageous to go up market from contingency to retained. So if you find that recruiter that used to be contingency but now works on retainer, that's a relatively safe choice. What are their fees? Search firms charge between 25 and 33%. If they charge on the lower end of the spectrum, they're more likely to be a generalist and hoping to make it up with volume. Ask your potential search firms the following questions. Do you charge on base salary or the first year package? What is your search methodology? Look for an answer that builds in execution deliverables and accountability. How much of the staff are dedicated to the director of surgical services search specialty? What is the delineation of duties for the staff assigned to my search? What financial incentives will your recruiters have to recommend one candidate over another? Or for a great candidate, one search over another? Also ask, how will you attract passive candidates to the search? Their answers should speak to your attributes and selling points and will demonstrate that they know the answer, or at least they know how they're going to get the answer. If you want to negotiate with your search firm, there are two leverage points, exclusivity and money up front. Offer either or both, and you should receive an equal and opposite concession from them, like the overall fee or a candidate deliverable. I'll include a link to a search agreement with these concepts spelled out in the show notes. So that concludes Chapter 4 of the Director of Surgical Services Recruitment Toolkit. Stay tuned for Chapter 5 questions to ask and not ask in interviews. Good luck and keep up the great work.